Yep. All right, and then to go forward, I'm hitting this computer or the mouse, either one. Okay. So uh, what, what am I gonna see? You'll see the presentation and then yourself over there. Oh, so I'm not looking at this, I'm looking at this, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Oh, there she is. There you are. All right, so I have the um, webinar in front of me. Do you see the webinar or do you see me? You have to share your screen. I have to share my screen. Yeah, so hit here. Yep. Yeah. And uh, just okay. do that's fine. You can close out of that. Is that yeah. And then you'll just hit where it says share screen, like the big button. And then you'll oh. just pick desktop one. Oh, I picked desktop two. Okay. <laughs> and then hit share. All right, so what do you see? I see it now. You see the webinar or you see me? Oh. I will, I'm gonna text me though, I'll have it on. All right, so I am seeing, I'm, they're seeing this. And your face. And my face. Just like on this. <laughs> it looks like I'm looking up into the sky, but okay. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm gonna, and how do I know when people are joining? Um, so right now there are 11 participants. I'll pop up at the bottom. It says 11. And they can hear us right now. <laughs> and then your Q&A questions. Um, Holly can see them. Hers are at the bottom. Yours will pop in right here. Okay. I'm going to plug in my computer because that's always <laughs> wonderful when it goes out. Hi, everybody. If you're just logging out, we're going to give everyone a few more minutes to log on and then we will get started. Okay, it's 12 o'clock, so we are going to get started. Thank you for being here and welcome to everyone. This is our webinar, Art Therapy for Anxiety, Helping Children Process Emotion Through Art. And <laughs> let me see if I can go to the next slide. Sorry, technical issues. Give me one second. 
Is that going to the next slide? Arrow, maybe? The arrow button, perhaps? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Stuff. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you. Um, okay. So my name is Diane Fly Shoes. I am a um, board certified, nationally board certified registered art therapist, and I work at the Julie Billiard campus in Lyndhurst. And with me is Holly Queen. Her, she also is a nationally board certified registered art therapist, um, and she works at the JB Akron campus. So to start off with, we'd like to introduce kind of what our therapy is all about, and then we can tell you how it is used in schools and how we use it to help with anxiety. So a big question we get is what is the difference between art therapy and art? So the, um, the difference is here on this screen. Uh, our therapy is a tool for helping us access and identify our thoughts feelings and memories, as well as foster changes in behavior through goal-oriented and facilitated processes with a credentialed art therapist. Um, most art therapists in Ohio anyway, also have a counseling license. So the master's degree is kind of in both. Um, that is not true for all over the country, but in Ohio, it certainly is. So it is more of a therapeutic setting than um, a one of instruction. So art education is more of the class providing instruction on techniques, on the elements and principles of art. Um, it promotes an understanding of and a passion or appreciation for art and artists. Um, certainly important, but a little different. And so for our kids, of course, the art therapy is better. Um, Holly, I know that I did that backwards, but I'm gonna let you take this one. <laughs> That's okay. Um, in art therapy, you will, I just wanted to add, sometimes you'll hear of um, process oriented versus product oriented. And even um, art as therapy, art therapists are not just simply, here's some art materials and there's that therapeutic um, value to it, but art therapists carefully select um, based on an expressive therapy continuum, um, which art materials to offer uh, a person um, with the goals in mind. So how does art therapy benefit all children? Um, it starts with the relationship, just as any um, therapeutic relationship, the um, interaction between the therapist and the person we're working with is essential. So it develops trust. Um, a lot of times children will come in and, and in a talk therapy situation, they may freeze up. They may not really even have the words to describe their emotions yet. Um, so the art really does open doors for the engagement and for the child to feel safe to express their, themselves. Um, effective communication. So art uses pre-verbal skills. That's why we can use it with very young children um, and even with adults. <laughs> um, art can bypass those um, the kind of the defensive language um, that even we maybe even use subconsciously. So the that is a great benefit for the art to go quickly and deeply into really what are the issues going on um, that we need to um, set up some goals for. So it allows a child to tell their story in a very non-threatening way and it's fun. So a lot of times I'm walking through the halls at school and you know I get several requests <laughs> to come down to um, the art therapy room. Uh, and then we go into the critical thinking and how art can help with executive functioning and learning to sequence tasks and um, the freedom for a child to who may be feeling anxiety or chaos to have a sense of control 
on what they're working on. And that really does help decrease anxiety just in and of itself. Um, the creativity that art therapy offers um, a child to think visually and expressing ideas by drawing them out. So if they are very um, excited or very angry or something um, with heightened emotion, getting it out on paper can give them a little bit of distance to that and be able to see that from um, an outside perspective. So we sometimes talk about like wringing out your sponge of, of emotions and it's, it's, it does that in a visual way. Um, pr physical process of, of making art. So along with that continuum, um, the very basic uh, level is kinesthetic and sensory um, art. So think of splatter painting or um, using plaster. Those are very physical processes. And um, as a therapist, we do, we watch the body language. Um, how much pressure are they using on the sharp with the Sharpie marker? Does it become flat by the time they're done? Um, and what all of that means, um, how they hold and treat materials. Um, and we just observe their focus and their interest in creating. So we are also working on emotional regulation through the art. So identifying emotions through colors and building skills in ways that are safe and fun and effective. So many children, um, when they come into the art room are very free with, they usually have a pre, they usually have an idea of what they wanna do, um, which is fine. And then if we can kind of guide them into a directive where they uh, can tell us something or, or they can show their anxiety and we can help them work on it that way. But the, but the idea is that we are providing a safe space and a fun space for them to be able to feel that they can express those emotions. Um, fine and gross motor skills. And as, how, as Holly was just mentioning, uh, we can see how they draw. Are they holding the pencil correct? Are they pressing too hard? Are they very timid with how they make their marks? So that tells us a lot about their personality, um, but it also might mean um, a recommendation for OT if we find that their uh, fine motor skills need some work. Um, and it is a multi-sensory process. So it improves the ability to manage sensory input um, there are some children who don't want to touch clay because they don't like the way it feels. So of course we provide alternatives or there are some who like the control of a pencil. So are, don't find that painting is the best outlet for them. But again, that tells us a lot about their sense of control. You know, they like that they can apply the pressure and make that line with a pencil, whereas paint is so loose that they can't control where it goes. So it tells us a lot about um, their mindset and where they're coming from. It requires a physical interaction, right? The body is involved in creativity and that is actually a big stress reliever. So um, I'm sure Holly does this as well. When we, when we begin class, we always begin our session with the, with the group with deep breathing. And um, we take two really deep breaths, right in, hold it, and then out. We do that all together. And then another grounding exercise that I provide for them is that they all have to sit in their seats and quietly in their brain find five things in the room that are purple or green. I give them a different color. But what that does is it, it, it makes them become present, right? So it makes them forget where they just came from, not worry about where they're going to, and it makes them present in the moment uh, because they are physically looking around the room and picking out things that are a certain color. And then um, once we've done that, then we go forward and they are more present and able to focus on what's going to happen. Um, art helps regulate our heart rate, 
our breath, our muscle tone, all through the physical movement of creating art. Um, and it provides opportunities for decreasing tactile defensiveness and increasing tolerance for sensory stimulation. So while we would never make a child um, do something that they really don't want to do, we always encourage them to try new things, things that they haven't tried before or things that they may be timid about. Um, and sometimes we can even use it as if it's a preferred activity, like they love water, most of them love water and can't wait to wash their hands. Um, sometimes if they know that when they're, they're done with their art, they can wash their hands or play with the water, then um, we, we can use that kind of as an incentive to get some work done. Holly, did you wanna add anything to that? Um, the, the regulation of your heart rate and breath and muscle tone, um, art therapy is a whole brain process. So I think it's pretty neat that you're using both hemispheres of your brain. And so it helps balance the, the child's mental state. And that's how, that's the kind of the process um, and the function of decreasing stress and anxiety. So it, um, that is also unique to um, art therapy versus just a verbal talk therapy. I have a student that really um, did not like art. <laughs> and I mean, you can imagine an art room it is full of creativity, but also a, um, a high sensory, it's potential. So, um, it was nice to kind of set up a plan with his teachers to um, have him just work on staying in the class for a certain amount of time and then using more controlled materials and then eventually getting comfortable with some painting and um, you know reassurance so that he wasn't stuck in the avoidance of it and that he, you know, art is a great opportunity to challenge some of those avoidant behaviors in a safe, you know, supportive uh, environment. So then it can translate into different social situations too. Absolutely. And, and the, the therapeutic relationship between the art therapist and the child is what is going to make all the difference. So we work very hard on creating a space that will be um, safe and fun. And then of course, we work hard on creating a therapeutic relationship where the child feels safe because I'm sure coming into the room can cause anxiety in and of itself. And then once they um, realize the routine and realize what will happen and know that there is a safe person there, that, that anxiety tends to lessen. And then once of course we get started, uh, the art helps to decrease that anxiety overall. And it's wonderful to see the other, their peers supporting them and how when they are successful, just, you know, the pride that they have that they, they were able to do it, so. Right, and that takes us right into social skills because it also, we also work when the, when the group comes in as a class, um, so we see children as a group in a group with their class. And then we also see individuals who are challenged or struggling and need extra help. We will see them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but when they come in as a class, of course, the social skills are all need to be reinforced and they need to be used by all the students. So um, that is engagement, collaboration, connection, and exposure to new experiences, right? They're experiencing new things or new materials together. Uh, learning to communicate effectively because we do have to share a lot of our materials. So even the simple process of, you know, how do you ask someone if you need something they have and um, please and thank you and then returning it, that whole, that whole situation. Um, and relationship is key. So we have plenty of room in our uh, art rooms, of course, for social distancing for this year, but even on like a regular typical day going forward, there is plenty of room to where they have, they have plenty of room to create there. They don't have to be on top of each other or they don't have to um, find a space where they can 
just be very creative without worrying about someone else's artwork. And, I, you know, we work a lot on community. So the community does so much for our kids um, and especially any kids who have anxiety challenges or, or that kind of thing. So we do a lot on giving back. So even if you have, even if you're a child who has some challenges or a family who has challenges, there's always a way to give back to community, even if it is, you know, drawing something or sending a card or using your artwork as a gift for um, whoever may have helped you. And that gives them a sense of power and it gives them a sense of um, pride that they, even though they receive services, they have a way of giving back. So that's pretty important, especially with anxiety because you want your child to feel empowered enough to advocate for themselves or advocate for a friend um, or even just the feeling of pride being able to give back in some way. Um, and then finally, reflection. So art helps us make meaning. Um, and a lot of the, this, a lot of these kids do such meaningful artwork and really insightful artwork. They might not even realize it at the time. And then once we kind of go over it and, and dig a little deeper, they're very insightful as to what they've created. Um, it helps us see from a different perspective. So everybody's, even if they're working on something similar, everybody's comes out different in the end. And that's, I know, especially in my room, I, I stress that by the end of our work, we should have 12 or 13 different artworks. And then we can appreciate each other's work and certainly appreciate our own. Um, it gives us a sense of direction, gives us emotional distance to work through challenges. Um, certainly if you can't say it or you can't find the words, even as adults, we sometimes have trouble finding the words to express how we feel, um, but we can all draw it, right? Uh, so it, whether it's literal or whether we kind of have to dig a little and talk about it later, um, we can all kind of draw what we're feeling. And we'll get to that in further in the slides is uh, kind of ways we do that with the kids. Um, and it helps us re recognize and respond to one's own feelings and then, of course, others' feelings. I was going to just add that um, one thing that I encourage is um, sharing their artwork if they feel comfortable um, under social skills, but also reflection and helping them to listen to someone else's story um, and focus on how to support one another is is very important, I believe, too, that we can um, we can practice that in art therapy. I agree, very important. All right, so art therapy for managing anxiety in children, um, the engagement and assessment of um, of their feelings and just them being able to understand how, um, like what is the function of anxiety um, and help them understand that there's a purpose that is helpful. So the goal isn't to rid a child of 100% of their anxiety because a certain amount of anxiety is going to be motivating um, my anxiety about this webinar <laughs> motivated me to you know, do all my research and be prepared. So the same with children. Um, some of that anxiety is okay and can help them, um, you know, become motivated to do their best. Um, to also, it can act as a um, a safety for them. If, for for instance, you know, they see somebody. Um, walking around that they don't know that anxiety tells their, sends their body the message of, you know, go to some place safe, or if they see a car going fast and too close to the curb, they know to that anxiety serves a function. So um, kind of normalizing that everyone has fears and worries is helpful for children. Um, I know psychologists, um, Counselors are very conservative with um, diagnosing children. Um, so being 
you know, addressing, I understand that some children have um, like a an anxiety disorder, maybe um, something more extensive, but um, we can support that any level of anxiety that they're having. So it, helping them talk about um, and show in their art, some worries and fears are small, some are large. We could do this with um, feelings identification and I'll let Diane talk about this artwork. Um, you could do it with like butterflies that I've seen, how you can have them pre cut out or have the child um, draw them based on is this a is this a small fear or small worry or is it bigger um, and even having a list of fears or ang fears or worries for the child to choose from they may not be able to put it into words um, and then let's see I think did you want to talk about the artwork uh, sure. So this is just an example more of feeling identification. Um, and of course, this being done with young children, this is a, one of the younger grades. And just having them create emojis or, or um, picking a color that they felt identified a certain feeling or emotion, and then drawing like an emoji face to describe that. Um, and we go into a lot about color because color affects everyone differently and, and some people more than others. And I certainly let them know that if your favorite color is red and you associate red with angry, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're angry all the time. Um, also color, your favorite color today might be different from your favorite color tomorrow. Or if blue is sad for you today, tomorrow it might be soothing. Um, and that's fine, right? Our feelings change and um, those kinds of choices change. But just to help them identify kind of uh, what that feeling looks like by drawing the emoji face and then kind of associating a color with it. And that even kind of gives them an out if they're saying, um, I feel yellow today or I feel blue today, you kind of can guess what feeling they're they're going for. And of course we would explore that more, but just giving them another way to express their feelings. Mm -hmm. And color can be really helpful in um, this next slide of zones of um, regulation and um, their safe zones. So I'll, um, I can let you talk about the, the body tracings, Diane, if you want. Sure. So this is always fun. And this is kind of something you always see like in preschools or outside in the chalk with playing with the chalk, but um, just your body reactions. So we have the kids, you know, lay on large paper and they can trace their, their body. And then after they've done that, we can ask them questions and kind of give them directions on how to fill it in. So if I'm doing something on empowering the kids or making them or having them identify their strengths, I can say, let's make this into a superhero. What would your superpowers be? And have them have fun with it that way. Um, if we're doing something as far as um, if you're feeling really sad, where do you feel it in your body and having them color that section? Or if you're feeling really happy, where do you feel it? Um, and then having them choose different body sections to color in. And then of course, really observing what they draw or how they draw it. And of course, where they draw it on the body to help get a sense of um, how that anxiety feels for them. Um, and then, then, and then that way, of course, psychoeducation, learning what happens in your body when you are anxious or worried is important. So you can learn ways to help your body feel better, right? And I think as adults, we feel stress in so many ways. You know, you get that that knot in the in the pit of your stomach when when you're when you're waiting for an answer, or um, you know, maybe you get headaches if you're worried about someone or something. Same thing for children, right? So they're feeling it in their bodies as well. So helping them recognize and learn that is a good tool for them to be able to then manage it. 
Holly, you want to add to that or you want me to go on? No, that was great. I don't have anything. <laughs> um, um, go ahead. You I can talk about these. One other thing um, yeah. with the with a figure outline, um, because you they you can download on the internet like a um, a figure outline too if you didn't have a large piece of paper to trace. Um, but I I had used I used to work for hospice and children having anxiety when someone in the in their family was very sick. Um, so we use those. Um, figure outlines also to educate kids on their level of about different um, diseases when their family member was in hospice. So um, there's a lot of therapeutic ways to use those um, figure drawings. Agreed. So here, and here's a couple more examples. So the body outline on paper that you see here is a small one. So this is what Holly was saying as far as downloading um, just an outline of a body on a smaller piece of paper, and then they can fill that in and, and kind of do it, kind of do the same thing as they did on the larger paper, only make it more manageable with just a small figure. Um, and then the one on the right is doll making. So, and this is just done with felt. And, uh, and if they're younger and can't, so of course you can help with that part. But what we would do is, put things inside the doll before we sewed it up. So, um, and they choose what they would like. And it's, that's kind of more symbolic. So um, if you want, if you wanted to put a, a heart in there, maybe they would choose a red bead and that would go in there and that would represent the heart. Or um, if they wanted something soft and pretty in there, maybe they would put little flowers or really anything goes. So they get to choose what they feel is important to be on the inside. Um, and then you can sew it up like a doll and they, they can actually have it. So this is also good for grief as well. Um, having something maybe of, of someone who passed either inside that doll or make it out of something that they uh, used to wear. Uh, that's another hospice type activity, but for anxiety, they don't necessarily have to choose what gives them anxiety to go inside. They could choose what helps them and put that inside. So lots of ways you can go with that, with the doll making. Mm -hmm. That was great. So relaxation um, training helps anxious children develop awareness and control over their own physiological and muscular responses to anxiety. Um, so children that come in very highly anxious are maybe not going to be um, receptive right away to relaxation or deep breathing or anything like that. Um, I've always worked with music therapists and there's something that um, I learned from them called attunement. So when you're thinking of trying to calm an infant um, who is crying uncontrollably or overwhelmed, um, you don't really just start in very like with a calm movement. You sometimes match, you know, matching their energy and then systematically bringing them to a calmer state. So sometimes that is helpful in art therapy with um, scribble drawings or drawing to music. You may start with music that is not calming right away um, and then work to something that is more calming. So um, again, using the gross motor um, to get that physical energy out is very helpful. Um, just having a choice of color. If they're experiencing internal chaos or they are, um, even at, at home, things are kind of chaotic for the time being, um, they may be bringing that to school. So helping them um, with color choices or choice of materials sometimes has a very calming effect because they feel that sense of control. Um, I've had some 
kids that would come down and want to, I have a example just right here, milk crayons. So on cardboard or on uh, canvas. And that it was amazing to see just how like calming that was for them. So art exploration can also anything process oriented such as wetting uh, watercolor paper, dropping inks on it. Um, it's kind of um, metaphorical for kind of letting go of the things that we can't control, but it still is, there's beauty in that. Um, mixing colors of clay, um, mixing paint colors, even if they never put it on a piece of paper, just mixing the process of mixing colors and talking about feelings that way um, and how they may be feeling a lot of different feelings at one time, right? There's a really neat technique of dropping food coloring into water and the food different colors representing feelings and then um, dropping, I think it was bleach into the water and then it would dissipate, but just to any, anything um, to help them understand because they're uh, our visual learners um, who need to experience something to understand it. So um, there is meditative or um, like the mand mandala art. I know the American Art Therapy Association has a whole thing on the mandala coloring books <laughs> um, and you know, what is art therapy, what is not, but um, Zentangle is another one um, that, um, that you can use some different techniques. Um, soul collage, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but these are things that, um, depending on the child, they may um, find certain materials more relaxing than others. Um, postponing your worry is um, the just encouraging parents to set aside a time for the child, um, not close to bedtime, just to help with giving their child one-on-one -on -one, um, a particular place, a particular time specified during the day that as worries arise, they can encourage the child to draw or write their worry in maybe a journal or sketchbook, and then remind them during the day as these worries come up that they will have a time to um, deal with that worry. That is sometimes helpful also. I agree, and, I, and I'd like to add to that also, when, when your child is doing artwork, um, let them, so they are expressing themselves, they are telling their own story, so find words that are encouraging, um, even if you don't think it's like the best drawing. So instead of telling them how to correct it or telling them they should have used a certain color or oh, you didn't stay inside the lines, instead of that, use words like, um, oh, I see you used purple. And is purple your favorite color or what's your favorite color? Or I love how expressive these lines are. So anything to put it in a, in a positive way, because if they feel they've drawn something that will be critiqued, they're not gonna to wanna to draw anymore or they're gonna be drawing to please someone else. Um, and then it's not really their story anymore. So art is something that they can have control over and children with anxiety um, need to know that they have control over, I mean, we all do, right? Need to know that you have control over something. So their art is something that they have control over and it is their personal expression. So the last thing we wanna do is um, criticize or critique their personal expression. So even if it looks like a, a big old mess to you, um, find something in there that is positive or that you like, and then bring that out and see if you can get them to, to talk about their artwork that way. So, and in the examples on the right, the scribble drawings, um, it's kind of, that's almost for children, kind of like a Zentangle or a coloring book. 
just being able to scribble and not having to make anything, just being able to use colors and make lines. And that's an exercise that we use here in the beginning of the year, just so that they know that they're free to do and express themselves how they want to. Um, drawing to music was something Holly and I did um, during the COVID, the pandemic, when everyone was sent home and we were online, um, just to make sure that the kids were listening to music and kind of drawing what they heard. And again, the even though everyone listened to the same song, every drawing that we got back was, was different because kids are processing things in their own way. And then of course the drawing on the bottom, the example you see here is just big arm movement drawing where again, they're not required to draw anything specific. They're just making big arm movements with a, with a Sharpie or black marker. Um, and then they have the opportunity to go in and color it in as they choose. All right, so affective ex expression. I think we've, we've really talked about this already, but <laughs> um, expressing feelings. So um, naming feelings, identifying feelings. I don't know if you've ever um, have seen the stormtrooper uh, and all the different feelings, but it's a stormtrooper face for each one. <laughs> Sometimes it can feel like that um, to children because they may not have uh, all of the language to describe what's going on inside of them. So um, I have a visual feelings wheel with colors, but again, like um, we said that what they chose for the color for that feeling doesn't mean that's yours. Um, culturally, there's differences. Um, so it's really whatever the child says it is for themselves. Um, so the main goal, a main goal in art therapy um, with a cognitive behavioral approach is to help children develop the awareness of these internal emotional states and be able to appropriately label them when they're having that feeling. Um, carrying around an art journal for some kids um, can equip them to uh, be able to use their relaxation strategies of art making when those um, different feelings come up or when they feel triggered. Um, and then the important role of parents. Um, so we can't do this alone and it, um, it takes a village. So the teachers, um, every, everybody on staff here, um, but also when they when children go home, just to continue to encourage that creativity and to allow them uh, a space to express themselves. Um, mask making, I have a few in my art room right now, but these are some great masks too. We do something called inside outside masks. So having the child paint or color the mask to represent emotions that they show to others like on the outside um, and then emotions that they may be feeling on the inside. So they'll be learning, okay, I might not show a lot of emotion on the outside of my face, but here's what I'm feeling on the inside. I might feel anxious, so I might feel happy, but um, certain kids don't have some, sometimes don't have that, um, um, affect. They may not show a lot of affect. So it's really helpful for them to identify what feelings they have. Anything else that you want to add to that? Um, I would agree. And, and this is something that you can, you can do with your kids because it could be anything. Um, it can be just a paper mask um, and you can, you can even present it as a strength-based activity. So uh, what strengths are you showing to the world on the outside? Um, what feelings do you have on the inside that maybe you don't show to the world? Um, on the above picture, we would we also do that with animals. Sometimes it's easier for them to identify those things through an animal. So you, in that activity, it was you pick an animal that you feel you connect with as far as strengths or, you know, I'm strong like um, I'm strong or I'm loud like a lion or whatever the case may be. And then they actually create the animal 
and then do the same thing. Um, what strengths does that animal have on the outside? Um, what do you think is their weakness on the inside? Um, you can do that with boxes. You can have a worry box where when they have a worry or um, something, they have a thought that they can't quite get rid of, have them write that down and put it in their worry box. But the outside of the worry box can be very happy and it can be um, positive or it could be strength-based, but just some place where they have to put that worry and kind of leave it. Or So you're not necessarily getting rid of it. Maybe it will always be there, but you have a safe place for it to be. And then you can focus on the strengths and the positive. I'm, Diane, um, we had two questions. I don't know if we want to address those now or uh, at the end. Not sure how much time we have. Um, we are actually coming upon our time, but let's get, how about we get through this quickly and then we can go to the questions. Is that, is that okay? Sounds good. I think we're almost there anyway. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, cognitive coping, creating adaptive coping self-statements, the way we think affects the way we feel and behave. I am safe. I can do this. Thinking happy thoughts can help me feel better. Um, and of course, our therapy can help to identify those and, and teach the child to replace the negative or danger-oriented talk with self-talk that emphasizes coping ability, decreases worry, boosts self-confidence, and reinforces effort and success. Mm -hmm. um, and success-oriented art techniques help build confidence and emphasize coping ability. So when you have something that's kind of um, loosely based, but the end result is always good, like the uh, watercolor, dropping the watercolor on wet watercolor paper, or um, watching ink mix on a tile or paper. The results are always beautiful. That's kind of a, a confidence building exercise. Yes. So um, real quickly, I'll just touch on blowing away our worries is um, a neat, uh, technique that you can add um, uh, food coloring to bubbles and then you talk about you talk about what it means to um, be worried or anxious and how that feels and that sometimes these worries get stuck in our heads and become the only thing we can think about or focus on so then through blowing these bubbles, they can you can choose a different color for different areas in their life. Like blue might be home, and red bubbles might be their worries at school. Um, but they can participate in blowing away their worries, and they can land on a piece of paper and then make these beautiful bubble prints on the paper. Then um, you can help the child actually label what those worries are, or maybe to replace them with um, an affirmation. So you can think of, um, you know, we're letting our positive thoughts bubble up. You could title that or also asking them to title their artwork gives you another layer of information of what they're feeling and thinking. Um, and then quickly, this was kind of the same idea. This was group work. So um, each student had to write down a negative thought that they carry with them. Um, they all put it in one box that I told them I was not going to read and would be destroyed. So I wanted them to be very honest. And then we wrote positive thoughts on balloons and bunched them all together so that um, we had a collection of positive thoughts. So knowing that nobody was gonna read their negative thoughts was very reassuring for them. Um, I think that they were very honest. You can also do this with real balloons. So you can write the positive thoughts on a real balloon and carry those around with you, which is fun, or f which is fun for younger, a younger group, I think, would enjoy the balloon. <laughs> um, and then of course, if there are parents watching, the importance of self-care for yourself. So your child brings to school with them um, stuff from home. And if, if the parent is very anxious or if the parent is 
um, you know, we all have difficulties at home, but just be aware that your, your child brings that into school with them. Um, and we are certainly here to help them, but we encourage you all to practice self-care. Um, and if you feel art would be good for you, we do have uh, parent art therapy once the, once we are given the green light to go ahead and do that again, but we did not have it this year. Um, we do have parent art therapy where you can find support from parents uh, whose children have similar challenges as yours. Um, but to, just to understand that, uh, to be a model to your child. So if you are upset and you're crying and your child sees you, that's okay as long as you then model how you're going to take care of yourself and talk about that, right? So maybe, you know, um, mommy or daddy's really upset right now. So the thing that helps me is music. I'm going to go in my room and listen to music and I'll talk to you later. And then of course, coming out later and talking to them and saying that music calmed me down. I was sad, but we all feel sad at times and we're going to be okay. And that's really all they need. They just need to know that everything's going to be okay. Whether you feel like that or not. <laughs> Sometimes we don't feel like that, but um, did you want to add anything, Holly, about parent support? No, I look forward to that though. I, I used to do home-based um, art therapy. So I love working with the whole, whole family unit. So I can't, I'm, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, we should probably go to these questions. Um, I think we are done. Are we? Uh, the, so the next slides, everybody are just references, resources, and reading. Um, and the slides in the webinar will be available uh, to everyone after the webinar. So you'll get a li this list of references and resources to look through. There's a lot of great ones out there. Um, and if you're interested in us in getting art therapy for your child, there are um, the ATCB, um, the Art Therapy Credentialing Board, um, and the Buckeye Art Therapy Association would be places um, to go to, to find a credentialed art therapist. Yes. And does one need to be a good artist to be an art therapist? You don't have to be an artist at all. So art therapy is all about the process. It is not about the end product. So um, being an artist or even a good artist uh, ha actually has nothing to do with it. It is going through the process of creating um, or trying new things or just understanding the relaxation of it for your anxiety. Um, so if it ends up being a great painting or drawing, fantastic. And if it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's kind of the journey through the art process as opposed to the art that is the end result. And I may, were they asking, do you have to be a good artist to become a, a art therapist or? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I read that as art therapy. So. Um, True. I mean, I, I have had, um, so when I, the way I did it, I, I actually changed my major from um, majoring in art to psychology, but I had like 63 hours in art. I know there are nurses that changed careers mid, mid-life and then got their prerequisites in the art and went on to get their master's um, in art therapy. So um, I would... I would say most art therapists enjoy doing art <laughs> um, because we never, as an art therapist, you never want to present something for someone to do without trying it yourself. Um, and do, what were you going to add, Diane? I, I, so Edward, I apologize. It's so, um, do you have to be a good artist to be an art therapist? No, I read it as art therapy. So I gave you kind of a, a skewed answer there, but you would, it, um, to be an art therapist, it is a master's degree, so you would need to have art prerequisites. Um, but to be a good artist is not um, is not the requirement. It's an, more of an understanding of what the art does and what the art media does, as opposed to like being an artist. So, <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Art is very subjective. <laughs> yes. We talk about, we talk about that. Um... We talk about how many 
of Van Gogh's were thrown away. He used to burn his paintings to keep warm. So, because nobody liked them. So even, you know, stories about artists that can contribute to, you know, never give up. If you love your art, that's all that matters. <laughs> so there's so many nice different um, values that you can can incorporate through through studying the lives of artists as well and how they work through their own challenges. I think that was is that all I think that's all the questions. Yeah and for suggestions of for art therapy in the Akron area, I would refer you to the Buckeye Art Therapy Association website for that. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. We certainly appreciate your time. Um, and again, the references, resources and suggested reading, which um, is, a, is a really good list, will be available to you after the webinar. And I hope everybody has a great day. And Thanks, Sally. Thank you. There's the, the last um, in the webinar series next week, um, June 1st, I believe, will be the 35 minute um, relaxation so I'm, I'm personally going to that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Where is it? I'm sorry, your mouse is over on that screen. Oh.